28 yesterday afternoon and 30 something this morning. Oh, well, that's not gonna happen. Yeah. Sitting around. Yep, I will have you do it probably one or two more times and I'll take some cell phone photos. No worries. Most of the clothing that we all wear is made out of synthetic or plastic-based materials. That may come as a surprise to people who kind of think about cotton t-shirts and wool and things like that, but the way it's all evolved is that the majority of our clothing is synthetic and the majority of that is polyester. We'll look at the outside of the puff jacket. This would be akin to something that we'd find in the ocean. One, it could be tiny short, it could be very short, or it could be quite long. It turns out that clothing can break, and it breaks in a really microscopic way. So think about garments or textiles being made out of hundreds and millions of tiny little fibers, and those fibers are so small they can be vulnerable to breaking. When they break off those tiny little pieces of tiny fibers, that's called microfiber, and when it ends up in our natural environment, that's microfiber pollution. Microfiber pollution can happen when we wear our clothes and these little bits just fly away into the air. It can happen in the wash, and it can happen in the dryer. An easy thing you can do at home to better understand your clothing and how much different types of garments shed is a tape test. We'll peel from here. some off on the table. Fleece, puffer, While the problem of microfiber pollution, as we know, it starts with us and wearing clothing, ultimately where these little bits of microfiber go is into the environment. We've found them in waterways from high alpine lakes to the middle of the ocean. We know that microfiber is flying around the air and it's been found in the soil and it's been found in creatures at all levels of uh, the marine food web and beyond. This is the fleece jacket. That's a lot of fiber. That is a very densely packed fuzzball. Let's look at the tape from the puff jacket. There's nothing there. So here's the tape lift from the puff jacket and there is virtually nothing here. Simple changes you can make to address microfiber pollution include taking care of our clothes better, so washing less and spot cleaning, then thinking about the wash itself, using cold water, doing full loads, using a Coraval if you have one, then air drying as much as you can instead of using a dryer. And in the big picture, being strategic about wearing low shed on the outside, especially when you go outside, and slowing fashion down. Whatever that may mean to you. It could be thrifting, it could be sharing clothes with friends, it could be investing in pieces that you know will last longer instead of cheaper garments. Keeping what I've had and using it strategically and moving towards natural where possible. And the coral ball is designed to protect our ocean and our public waterways by preventing the problem of microfiber pollution. The coral ball does this two ways. One, it helps prevent shedding in the washing machine in the first place by keeping our clothes apart, and that helps our clothes last longer. And when some fiber breaks off, it helps by collecting some of that before it can wash out the drain.
this problem can feel overwhelming. And sometimes I feel that way as well. It is a big problem made up of lots and lots of tiny pieces. And the reality is that everyone who wears and launders clothing is part of this problem. But the good news is that everyone who wears and launders clothing can also be part of the solutions. Set it to a cold water setting. 